Hey, we're gonna be working with polymer clay. So polymer clay, normally you pick it up in things like this. Uh, and uh, so there's several brands, Sculpey, Fimo, uh, what is this one, Primo. It's, uh, um, these are just some off brands there. Um, and, and the secret about this stuff if it, is it's an oven baked clay, not a kiln like a lot of the, you know, the really hard clays that you might use. This creates, uh, we call it a polymer clay because it sort of becomes a plastic. And what that means is it comes in a lot of different colors and they can all be put together. This one has a little bit of paint on it. And uh, as you see, it's been baked. So it, it is very plastic. It, it has, it's hard now. Um, it still uh, can break course but it's not brittle and uh, and so that's kind of a cool thing you can get some pretty good detail with it there's a, a lot of different things you can do these are just some uh, some fun little hands that I did I, I have one of these is designed to hold a little paintbrush I wonder if I have anything like a little paintbrush here um, See, how would I hold a paintbrush? I guess it's gonna come right through here. There we go. So, so this is kind of a uh, fun thing. I really like this stuff. You know, of course, these would probably be very breakable, but they'd be breakable in virtually any kind of clay that we do. Um, and you also notice that I have some wires in these. I want to hook them to other things, and the wire is going to be important. But also, normally we wouldn't get much thicker than this. Uh, so you see how thick this is. This is still only about 3 eighths of an inch. And uh, any thicker, then I'm going to create some sort of armature in there. So this is hollow, and uh, I've created an armature out of aluminum foil and some wire. So often I'll take uh, something like this. I, I sort of form these things so that after I put the aluminum foil on it, and I, I do a lot of the sculpting in the head, but I, I sculpt it like this so that I can always set it down, and then I don't have to lay the soft clay down. This stuff can be really soft. Now, here's the tricky part about this stuff, though, is you see how this one breaks. Um, and so when, it's, when, when it hasn't been touched for a while, it needs to be uh, conditioned. And normally conditioning means that you can take it, you could work it between your fingers like this. See, this is already starting to feel better. It, uh, it's softening up. It's blending together. My hands tend to get dirty when I use this. But you see now this one is, uh, it, it bends and is flexible. Whereas this one just a moment ago is, is still, uh, well, it's still going to break, break. And so here's another way that we tend to condition these things. And uh, with larger amounts is good. I'm going to pull you over here. This is a, well, really, it's a noodle maker. It's a noodle machine or a uh, pasta machine. And, oh, what we normally do is we can set it to different thicknesses. And I think this one is almost as thick as it'll go. Yeah. So what we do is that we can take some fresh clay and, oh, I'm going to send it through here. I put my hand underneath and catch it. Come on. Get through there. So what happens is it squishes it all down and it still breaks up. But then I can uh, push it all back together. Get other parts. And after I send it through there a few times then it starts to become conditioned and uh, it's much softer. I can fold different parts in. This is also a great way to mix different colors. 
Um, and there's some amazing things that you can do with this, like this. Now, sometimes we'll be using this to actually thin it way down, so then we can get some very thin colors or some very thin layers. And then, uh, so I might use something like, if I have a whole bunch of white, if I have bought, you know, a couple pounds of one color, I can do a lot of the sculpting with that. Um, almost like building the mus musculature up underneath the sculpture. And then I can go ahead and hit it with, uh, you know, put my other, my real colors on top of that. Or sometimes we can blend them together, and I might show you that in a little bit. Now, I'm going to be creating an animal here, and the thing that I really want to do is I want to have resources. So this is a little dog friend. That I used to have and uh, and and so I'm looking for some photos this is a pretty good face on uh, I have one from above which is really nice to be able to have an image like that from above so uh, so I can see all of the details of the head from above and all of the shape. I know how long the nose is, how far, how wide the eyes are in comparison. And then uh, this one, she's giving me a profile. So I have a profile, an above shot, and a pretty good face on shot. So um, I don't know how much I'm gonna worry about colors at first, <sighs> but I am gonna worry about uh, the shape. So let's go to the top shot, because what I want to do is I want to use this to begin sculpting uh, my top. Now for this particular project in my classroom, if you're following along, you know that we made a, uh, a body to go with these things first. By the way, the reason that we use uh, this um, the reason that we use aluminum foil is because since these are going to go into the oven I believe it uh, is it 375 degrees da, da, da. yeah I think it's 370 no 275 degrees oh geez Louise so it still just might be if I have things like this one is covered with plastic tape it's paper. I don't think that the paper is going to burn in 15 minutes at 275 degrees, but the plastic could melt a little bit. And then so the idea of having an armature, which is made of aluminum or aluminum foil, is a, a good idea. So I'm going to begin immediately sculpting with the aluminum foil. Uh, remember that I want to have... The, the nose, so I'm going to try to create something very similar to that so that I only have to use about a quarter inch max of clay on there. And then we have different kinds of aluminum foil. And uh, I'm just going to put some on here. Now the ears I'll be able to get nice and thin. For those of you who have done the molding and casting with me, you know that you can't, it's just we can't get the ears very thin most of the time. Because uh, in a mold, you have to have a little bit greater depth. All right, this, uh, if I don't have it straight, it could be a little bit problematic for me. And uh, so I'm just going to see how this works. Now, obviously, if we're going to attach this to a sculpture, I'll worry a little bit more about the, um, you know, the shape of the neck. And uh, you see that sometimes I'll try to get in here and add you know, uh, go around a little bit to hold the edges in. But I really don't know how to do that very well. So. So 
So one thing about the aluminum is you can really uh, shape it. If I decide that I want, come on, that I want part of the neck a little bit farther back, I can uh, either push it with my fingers, I could even take a harder tool and sort of tap it. I might end up bending the wire underneath, but that's fine. So remember, I'm not getting too close. So this can be quite thin right here, but I think this is probably a pretty good shape for our demonstration. All right, let us start with some tan because this little dog uh, had a lot of tan. She was nearly bald. I'm going to take, I'm not going to start with a new one, I don't think. Uh, oh good, I have some here. And uh, you can see that it was all, it's all been worked before. So I'm going to send it through here a few times. Now sometimes this looks like it could be uh, super scopy. They came out with a number of uh, well, uh, different kinds of polymer clay, and so you could buy bricks of this stuff. And uh, I think that it dries a little bit harder, and so it's a little bit stiffer, a little bit more difficult to work with, but um, you can already see that just with a very little bit of processing, it's already looking kind of smooth, a bit smoother than the other ones. And often the materials that are stiffer Oh, I forgot that I'm doing this at a very thin uh, point. Often the materials that are uh, a little bit um, stiffer or harder, they'll hold the detail better. So um, Super Sculpey is great for doing something like this where I'm really hoping to get a bunch of different details, you know. All right. I'm glad I had this stuff. Um, now I should show you this. Uh, we can actually mix these colors together a little bit. And I'll just show you a quick way that we can do that. You, you notice that I have a whole bunch of different colors here, all kinds of different browns. And that's because I, I took some time and I put them together uh, in different um, ways. That is, I, I I mix them together a little bit. So here, I'll take some of this, and I'm just gonna see what happens if I mix a little bit of this brown in there. I'll run this through here. And uh, one of the really fun things you can do with this is if I was to just run it through once, I now have very thin layers of this in there. I could cut this and put it together in a couple of different ways. I think this brown is really going to dominate this. And I'm just going to keep folding and sending it through our pasta machine. And, uh, and then it's going to create a version of a tan or a brown somewhere between this initial one and this really dark one that I had there. Oh, I don't know. And then of course, if I have that, I can continue to mix a variety of different colors. You know what, I don't think I'm gonna do it anymore. Um, so, I'm just gonna start applying some of the clay on here. I probably should have chosen some that I had a little bit more of, but uh, here it goes. So getting a thin coating at first is gonna give us a uh, good ability to um, attach other things to it. 
And even though it might not look correct just yet, I think I can bring it around. Whoops. Hold up, I think I did see a big old lump of it earlier in one of my boxes. There it is. Oh. Let me see if I can get some of this going pretty quick. So one easier way to do this, I think I have a blade around here. Please be careful when you're using the blades. I should have a good cutting surface under here, but I don't. All right, so I just want to take a little bit out right now, and then I'll go ahead and start conditioning it. Aha. Now, as I said, in the classroom, we just recycled a whole bunch of kind of odd colors. And so you see that some of the colors we have are like pinks and purples. But for this stage, that'll probably work out just fine. All right, I don't know if I'm close to the size of the back of the head, but I'm gonna go ahead and put some on there. I'm not gonna worry about the ears yet. I might uh, pretty soon just mark where I think they'll be. I'm not really a purist about how about colors at first. I'll try to show that to you. I'll um, put some on there. It's neat to get it close to your final. So you can see I'm pretty far off. I can still take any cutting tool or sculpting tool and sort of pull some of the clay off of the aluminum because I'm gonna pound some of this back. Otherwise, I'm gonna have very thick clay on one side and I definitely want uh, to try to even out my thicknesses so that they all bake at the same rate You know, stuff happens, and sometimes we have a, a little bit of uneven. See how this one is coming so much further, so I can uh, potentially try to move the nose, or I can Just widen the nose a little bit on this side and make it appear that it's closer to the center of this. If I have more roundness right here, I'm going to put a little bit extra over here to match it. Now 
we actually have these really cool opportunities with this stuff in that when I decide to make the eyes, that we could work them just as you might expect. I'm, uh, as I look at this from the top, I'm going to try to, you know, imagine that the eyes seem to be here. I'll definitely have to add a bunch back here. Uh, they're such big eyes, and they're so dark that um, one of the things I might do is I might go ahead and I could bake the eyes first. Like I could go ahead and grab the colors that I want, maybe a black and one of those dark browns, and you know, if I can mix some of this together, oh geez Louise, Yeah, I think as long as it's very dark and very shiny, we should be okay. Uh, but I guess my point is, I could go ahead and uh, bake these first. Once I'm sure that they're the right size and the right color, if I bake them, they become like marbles. And then I can just put them in there and they're not going to get damaged in this process that I go through. Oh, but now that I think about it, I might want to put a touch of blue in there too. I'm just thinking it's going to make it more beautiful. You could, you'll barely be able to see it. Oh, you know what I should do? I'm going to go against my own advice here. And I'm going to uh, just sculpt one half of this. I wanted to show you some things that I did for one of the past, or some of the past sculptures. There's a possibility of making lots of patterns. And so if you notice, oh, it's difficult to see. What I did was I rolled up a bunch of different colors. Let me see. Uh, one into uh, each, one into another, and then I uh, and then I cut them into very small. I made a long roll, and then I cut them into very small sections. Now here I have all of these. Uh, I baked all of these. I, I sculpted these things that I thought looked a little bit like eyes. And then I bake them so that I could throw them into some of the sculptures that I do. And so that's kind of what I was getting at. That's what I wanted to show you. Oh, here's a... Uh, so here's the idea. I took a number of different uh, colors and I put them all together. You know what, it's too complicated. I'm not gonna tell you. I'm not gonna tell you. I'll show you sometime. All right, so this is just gonna be kind of a throwaway, I think. All right, I am gonna make single eye. You think that's too big? No, I think it's a good size. So then, judging this, I'm going to do a weird thing. I'm definitely going to have to add some more on there because you need some more out there. I'm going to bring this eye about over here. And I know it seems kind of weird to dig a hole for an eye, but I've said it before, I'll say it again. Any animal 
that has eyes probably has a skull. If it has a skull, then it has an eye socket. If it has an eye socket, it probably has a brow and a cheekbone. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, you know, I might be able to use only half of this. Let's see if I can do it. All right, so I might be able to use that one for the other side. And I'm doing this as an example. I want you to be able to see how the process is done. Normally, uh, when I place one eye, I would place the other one at the same time so that I would make them symmetrical. But instead, I'm just gonna try to get through some of this so that you can see the process. Um, Play. All righty, I am going to look closely at this and then I'll look from this side and I can see that it's got a little bit of a lower eyelid. back to here. The upper eyelid sort of like this. I can see that there's a little... Well, maybe I'll stick with this. I might be able to pinch some down right here. There we go. All right, so here's some things I'm gonna start doing now. I'm gonna use, I guess this is some more of that eye color, but I'm gonna go ahead and use it and try to do a little bit of the nose. So let's see, that comes back a bit like this. And then All right, here's a way to think about noses. Uh, please try not to think of a nose too much as, a, uh, as the holes in the face. Instead, I mean the holes, the nostrils are going to be important. But what I really want to do is I would like to uh, Instead of doing the holes, the not thinking of the nostrils as holes, think of them as, can you see this? Nope. Whoa. Think of them as the flesh surrounding the hole. Because that way then, I can get in here and I can add a little bit of color it around I might go ahead and just come all the way around I don't know maybe that's too big but yeah it does appear to be okay but I can always size it down Oink. Shapow.
All right, I got a little overly ambitious, so now I need to cut some off. Now you might notice also that I got a little bit fast and free with the colors. And uh, part of that is because I know that I can put, I can add some colors through here and I don't gotta keep them hard edged. I can put a little bit of what's going on here down here and then maybe even feather it a little bit as I put it in. But remember, the one thing we can do is we can always paint this afterwards. And also remember that you don't have to mix the exact colors. It's sure it's kind of nice to, if you're working with an animal you know well, to try to get some of the exact colors, but it's uh, we're not copy machines so sometimes it's just best to know that we can express with color rather than just try to copy what we see so we can feel free to get in there and do anything we want with the color All right um, And uh, so I don't have to cut it away necessarily. If I need to bring a portion back, I can maybe do that. I see that I can push the nostrils back a little bit more, and that means the fleshy parts surrounding the holes. I can bring those back. I can curve this part back. Shebang. And then I haven't even started on the lower jaw, the lower mandible, but let's see if I can just shape something quick. All right, I don't think I'm going to go much further today. Frankly, I don't know if you'll ever see this. Uh, A lot of shooting an awful lot of videos that nobody ever sees. All right, that's not right. So, but there are certain parts that are cool. Bringing this back. No, maybe. And then uh, I see that that lower mandible might come this way a little. Oh yeah, I can bring that neck back further. I think I suggested that earlier. And uh, I should also pay attention to the shape of the mouth. Now especially something like this, the shape of the mouth we can do an almost like a watercolor in that later and uh, to create a, a nice shadow. Um, although if I can cut in here deeply enough, uh, it already does kind of a nice shadow. We want to make it a little bit irregular because it's uh, fur, of course. and um, But we know that it's kind of round because it, the mouth, the jaw is round in the front. Know what I mean, jelly beans? And what should I do? Um, I feel like I'm getting a little bit big. Uh, but if I wanted to, I think
think this is that brown stuff that I made before. Yeah, there's definitely need, gonna need to be more back here. I should have, I could have made the head much bigger. In fact, if I was going to, I'd probably use this, wouldn't I? can we go geez it's huge so sometimes I'll measure like this I'll take a tool um, I can measure uh, from the nose to the eye whatever part the back of the eye the middle of the eye and I've marked that measurement with that now from the eye to the back of the head seems to be a little bit more than that so if I measured the same way here and from that eye to the back of the head, I'm gonna have to come back to there. Now that's not as bad as I thought. I'm not off as far as I thought, um, but, but we'll see. Remember, I'm only gonna do half of this today because when I'm lazy, It does come much further out here, doesn't it? So the things I observe are where, if I drew a line across the nose through the eye, you know, where is this? See how this, um, at the center of the eye, you know, how wide this is back here compared to the eyes. Is it wider or is it gonna be a straight shot back? Hmm. All right. Uh, this is Sophie the Wonder Dog. She was amazing. She had superpowers. Oh. Boy, I might need to push this back a little bit further. Oh, well. I'm hoping that you guys get the idea, and uh, well, I guess that's that. <laughs>